Deepika Agarwal and in this video I will talk about CSS hover effects. Normally in a website hover effects can be found for various components like there can be a subtle background color transition on a button or maybe team members card on an about us page or even product cards for an e-commerce website. These help to improve the user experience and also add interactivity. Netflix uses hover effects on a card for a show or a movie to display more information. When I hover over an anime or a show, the cards expand to show information like number of episodes, seasons, a planar icon and other such details. In the home page of Lambda Test, there is a nice background color transition on the main call to action button. But when I hover over the text beside it, which reads book a demo, its color also changes from black to blue, indicating that this link can also be clicked. And when I click on it, a model opens where of course I can book a demo effects can be used to display more information or even indicate that a component can be clicked, which will lead to further actions. We can be quite creative with CSS and combine its wide range of properties to make these transitions. I will now give a walkthrough of one of my experiments on hover effects for navigation links. The link hover effect that I will show in this video is what I like to call text fill up hover effect. It is a little different from the normal color changing hover effect that are normally seen in our website. Here when I hover the mouse over the link, the color changes from gray to yellow but rather than changing directly, yellow color moves up to fill the link text. The main CSS property that works here is the background clip property. So let's jump straight to the code and see how I view CSS to make this smooth over effect. Starting with HTML code. Because it is a hover effect for links, I will first have a nav tag. Nav tag was introduced in HTML5. These tags provide a meaning to the content and so are important for accessibility. Inside the nav tag, I will write a ul tag. ul is for unordered list. Inside ul, each li tag will have an anchor tag. Then each anchor tag will contain the menu link. So let's say for the first link, um, we have uh, we take it as home. I will give this anchor tag a class also, say nav link. I will just quickly copy paste three more links here. So I have home, products, contact us, and about us. The list is showing here in the output screen. Beside each link, there is a bullet point, which is default for an unordered list. The markup is done. Now let's move over to the CSS code. First, I will use a little CSS reset code that I like to use in most of my code examples. Here, I'm basically removing the default margin and padding set by a browser. Asterisk is a universal selector. It can select an element of any type. Before and after are the zero elements. So this combination of CSS selectors selects all the elements on a web page and sets their margin and padding as zero. Then box sizing border box property helps to include border width and padding value in the width and height of an element. In default case, these values are not contained within the width and height. The elements take up more space on a page and may even mess up the layout. Just to solve this, box sizing border box property is used. Here, I have also added a little background color to the body tag. Uh, next, I will target the nav tag and see how much space it is taking on the web page. For this, I will just add a red border. So um, this is my nav tab. I want all the links on the right hand side of the nav tab. So for this, I will just use flex box that is display flex. Uh, then I will add uh, justify content property and set its value as flex end. Now all the links are coming on the right hand side. Uh, let's also add a little top and bottom padding to nav. 
Now my links are on the right hand side, but because I'm using a URL tag, which is a list, all the links are in a column. To solve this, I will target the URL tag and add display flex property here also. Now all the links are coming in a row. Also, I don't want these bullet points to appear. So to remove them, I will use list style type property and set it to none. All the links are very close to each other. To add space among them, what I can do is use gap property inside the UL tag and give it some value like 2EM. Another way is to target the li tag and give it a left and right margin. So I will give a left and right margin of 1.5 EM and it will create a nice space among the links. Now it's time to use navlink class and style each of the links individually. First, I will give some font size and a font family. To remove the default underline effect from the links, I will use text decoration and set it to none. Like I said before, this is not a normal color changing over effect, but rather I am using background clip property in combination with background size and background position to make it seem like the color is moving up to fill the text. Uh, for this, of course, I need to define a background which will be clipped within the text. Uh, I will just quickly remove the red border that I had given to the nav tag. Now coming to the navlink class again for defining a background, I will use background image property and then use linear gradient. Linear gradient can take multiple color values, but for this example, I just need two colors. First one is gray and second one is yellow. The background for each of the links is of course divided into gray and yellow and slowly the gray is fading to yellow. I don't want the gray color to fade to yellow but I want a defined line to separate these colors. For this I will add a percent beside both the colors. Now 50% of the background is gray and other 50% is yellow. To clip a background within a text, three main CSS properties come into play. First is to define a background, which can be done using background image property or even background shorthand property. Here I have used the background image property. Second is to set the color of the text as transparent. This is done so that the normal color of the text, which is purple in this case, does not hide the background, which I otherwise want to show within the text. So let's set the color as transparent. Third is to use the background clip property. Background clip property can accept many values, but here we will be using text. No changes are showing here because I'm using Chrome browser and for it, I actually need to add a vendor prefix, which is WebKit to the background clip property and assign it the value text. Now my background is nicely clipped within the menu link where half of the background is gray and other half is yellow. Uh, next, I will use the background size property to set a size to the background image. I will set it to 100% space to 100%. 100% is the width and 200% is the height of the image. Um, because I assign 50% to both colors gray and yellow when adding background image where 50% is of the total background image height. So here 50% of total height, 100% for each gray and yellow colors. So upper half will be gray and lower half will be yellow. So menu link right now is covered entirely in gray. To add the hover effect, I will use media hover query, which is written as at media hover colon hover. 
and then curly braces. This media query actually targets all those devices where we can perform a hover, uh, like laptops, desktops. It does not include touchscreen devices like our mobile phones. This actually helps to solve the problem of a hover effect getting stuck in mobile screens after like a link is clicked and then user returns back to the main page. The hover effect actually gets stuck and to solve this problem we use the media hover query. Inside the curly braces I will target the enabling class again and basically use its hover pseudo class and inside it write background position setting it to 0 space 100%. Uh, 0 is the horizontal position and 100% is the vertical position. So this uh, property will move the background upwards by 100%. Now if I hover over the menu item, the color is changing to yellow but it is kind of abrupt. To get a smooth transition, I will add transition property within the nabling class. Transition property specifies the transition duration and the type of transition that I want. So when now I hover over the menu link, yellow color is slowly coming up to fill the nav link. The hover effect is complete, but since a web page can be viewed from various devices of different screen sizes, uh, ranging from as small as 320px to as, uh, as large as 2560px for large monitor devices, um, it becomes important to test our code for them and see if the content can properly fit in for those screen sizes without affecting user experience. Um, for a laptop, which is a screen size of about 1680px, the code is working properly. Links are properly aligned on the right hand side. Text size is OK and when I hover over the link, the yellow color is filling up nicely. But what if I want to check for smaller devices like mobile phones? How do I do that? Chrome actually provides Chrome developer tools where I can easily check the responsivity. Uh, simply to right click on the web page and click inspect, this will open the developer tools. Um, here in the right window, all the HTML code is visible. We can click on any element and also check its CSS code. Uh, here is also an option to switch between some of the devices like iPad mini, Samsung Galaxy S8 and check how the code is working for those devices. But there are still some limitations to testing with Chrome DevTools. I noticed slight variations in how some of the CSS properties were working in one of my projects when I hosted it and checked it on my phone, which I could not detect in the uh, Chrome developer tools. So I prefer to use a software which is known as LT Browser. Uh, it has many added features to Chrome Developer Tools. I have downloaded the Windows version. Uh, you can simply visit the Lambda Test website and then in the navigation bar, go to Platforms. And here on the right hand side, you can see the option LT Browser. Uh, just click on this download button. It's very easy installation. Just follow the simple steps. When I open LT Browser, it looks something like this. On the left hand side, there is a wide range of devices that I can select from. Even here, I can inspect any element and check the HTML and CSS code. What I like most about LT Browser is that I can select multiple devices at the same time and check them simultaneously. Like here, I have opened a Google Home page in both a tablet and a phone. I can also check the page in landscape mode also. Uh, I will now check my hover effect across various screen sizes using LT Browser. So starting with smaller desktop sizes of about 1280px, the output looks actually good. Links are on the right hand side, the font size is okay. And when I hover over them, the yellow color fills up nicely. Switching to even smaller desktop size of 1024px uh, does not affect the output links are properly showing and the hover effect is also working as expected. Uh, now when I check my code for mobile screens, I can see that the text for some of the links like contact us and about us are wrapping up in the next line. 
For this one thing I can do is to reduce the font size uh, for just mobile screens but the font size is already around 18 px and reducing it lower than that would not be good for user experience as the user may have to zoom in to view the content. Uh, mostly for mobile screen websites, um, people tend to have a hamburger icon on the right hand side of the navigation bar, uh, which is when tapped on a mobile menu opens with all the links. But for this tutorial, I will not make a hamburger menu, but I will use Flexbox to align these links in a column um, which, uh, by just targeting the mobile screens using media query. CSS actually provides media queries to write styles for specific screen sizes. So it is written something like this. It starts with at media. Then we have the conditions which are connected by the keyword and. This particular media query actually targets the screens which are smaller than 576px. Now to get all the links in a column, I will target the UL tag and write flex direction with value as column. All the links are now showing in a column. To get all the links in the middle, I will target the nav tag and write justify content center. The links are now aligned in the middle. Lastly, I will give some top and bottom margin to the li tags to create a space among them our effect is now responsive too so that's all for this video thank you for watching it i hope you liked my little experiment of text fill up over effect if you have any questions then do mention them in your comments thank you